And all I'm going to ask of you is, yes. is that you will put all that drive and enthusiasm into helping me yeah. and you get that into every single theme park that there is across the country. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Shark Tank products the sharks regret taking. I think we walked out of the tank looking at each other and say, what just happened? If he gets the deal, he got the gets deal. gets the deal, I get the deal. I don't, I don't. You haven't understood the problem. For this list, we'll be looking at those deals the sharks made that turned out to be nowhere near as profitable as they thought. We'll be including products from both the U.S. and Australian shows. Have you ever bought a product shown on Shark Tank? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, Kate App. Our first entry on this list was dubbed the Cheaters app by one of the sharks. So Neil, this is a Cheaters app. But in reality, it's a privacy app. But let's call a spade a spade. It's That's a Cheaters fun. app. I'm okay with that. It's a Cheaters <laughs> app. Good for you, Neil. Go with it, baby. Own it. The entire point of the app is to conceal any communications on your mobile device that you wish to keep private. But, but Neil, do you have any issues or concerns about the morality of the product you're promoting? Let's put it this what way. What are you talking about? Let the guy answer a question. I'm answering okay. for you. I, the I'm answer okay is no. Fighting. It's no. You choose which contacts you keep hidden, and any text messages or calls are diverted to the app, hiding them from plain sight. Although the founder got a combo deal from Kevin O'Leary and Damon John, the app is nowhere to be found. Ooh, I love a good deal. Mm. Yeah, you guys can make some money with it. I love the kid. Yeah, he's a great kid. The website no longer exists, and their last tweet was in 2013. Similar apps have since surfaced, but this one is now long gone. Number 9. Cubits during the first season of the show, Shark Tank saw Mark Berginger come in and try to pitch his construction toy concept to the investors. These toys are quite easy to put together as you just secure them with a connector. Then you could use a panel, perhaps, and there you go. You've already started building something. It's that simple. Cubits, as they are called, are essentially a series of interlocking flat plastic pieces that kids could use to build whatever their imagination came up with. It was a creative endeavor that I've had in my mind for a long time. Once you create a form with this type of geometry, it can create natural structures that relate directly to science. Damon gave Mark a contingency offer, which hinged on the ability to get a major toy seller to buy into the concept. You accept? Yes, I do accept. Okay. We're in business. Fantastic. Okay, man. Thank you, Damon. Unfortunately, they couldn't convince other toy makers to take the product on, and Damon pulled out. Despite the hurdle, Cubits is still in business and continues to actively sell products on Amazon. Number 8. 365 Will Strange is an entrepreneur from Australia who pitched the idea of a subscription service for men's underwear on the Australian version of Shark Tank. So imagine having the ability to have something delivered to your door every three months. It allows you to have your own underwear and have them perfectly crisp for you every time. <laughs> for $30, you get three pairs of underwear and three pairs of socks. Delivered. He successfully got an offer from Naomi Simpson and Janine Alice, and that would have been the end of it. However, during his appearance, concerns came up over his ability to balance his work with that of other businesses he's managing. So, who's going to be running this full time? Myself. What about the other business? I'll be running both. You can't run both. You can't do it because you know what? Neither will reach the heights that you want them to. You need to have a sole focus and a passion for one of them. Yep. After the episode aired, Will ultimately decided to dedicate his attention to a sports performance tracking business. 365 was ultimately sold off and then eventually closed its doors for good in October of 2019. Well, business is tough. Yes. Right. And this Bad is your man. first lesson, right? Yeah. And look, what a great looking board you've got. Oh, I mean, no. unbelievable. <laughs> Number seven, Hikon. Who would have thought a fire hose attachment would spark such a huge deal? Mark Cuban offered $1.25 million to buy out Hikon and guarantee employment for its creator, Jeff Stroop. 
and I'll pay you a percentage of the profits once we hit certain hurdles that we agree to. Jeff had created a specialty adapter for both fire and garden hoses that allows them to be connected far easier than traditional means. As you can see, the Hycon is already connected. It's ready to turn the water on. The other side, we're still trying to screw it on. Okay, now he's got it tight. The deal fell through when Stroop and Cuban disagreed on how best to get the product into the market. Cuban wanted to license the design to another company, where Stroop wanted to retain full control. It disturbs me immensely to watch you suck the life out of this man. He's worked so hard to get to where he is, and you're just taking it all away that from is him. It's such pahooey, right? And that's the most polite word I can come up with. Jeff ultimately prevailed, but as of 2019, their Facebook and Twitter pages have gone silent, and their online store seems to be missing. Number 6. Night Runner It's dark out, and you decide to go for a run. Just as you're picking up speed and seeing your heart rate go up, you trip and stumble over something in your path. Doug and Renata Storer pitched the Night Runner 270 shoe lights to the Sharks in Season 8. They provide 270 degrees of visibility around you. Wow. 150 lumens oh, wow. out in front with a 30-foot beam distance to identify any uh, trip hazards that might be in your path. Robert Herjavec made them an offer, and it seemed that they were well on their way. As it turns out, they didn't end up needing Robert's money. Congratulations, so guys. Congrats. That was great. Thank Thanks for the shoes. You're welcome. Thank you. Once their episode aired, their business took off on its own, and they no longer needed a major investment to be successful. The shoe lights continue to be sold today, and they have now expanded their product line even further. They played their hand really well. Number five, show no towels. Take one big towel and cut a hole in the middle. That's show no towel. And then the name just shot out at me. It's a changing towel, it's a poncho, it's a show-no. Shelly J. Ehler came into the Shark Tank and convinced Lori Grenier to go into business with her. The plan was to try to sell these towels to water and other theme parks. I promise you I will not let you down. That, by the way, is a first on Shark Tank. She believes in you so much, Shelly, she's not willing to do any due diligence. Three years after the episode aired, Shelly threw in the towel and gave up on her business. Unlike others, she didn't get a wave of orders after the episode aired. I have a call into a connection with, with Disney right now. And it's very recent. I haven't heard anything back, but I'm going to keep working it until I get it. Despite a deal with Disney World's water parks, the towel business didn't take off, and her deal with Grenier was less appealing once the cameras were off. I just want to say something here. I'm stunned. You're letting a woman with an impassioned plea with a slit in a towel suck you in. Number four, the body jack. Jack, I see another workout device on the floor, along with all the others I've seen, and ask myself, what's special about this? And the answer is, let's be honest with each other, nothing. Barbara Corcoran made a deal with Jack Berenger, a.k.a. Cactus Jack. If he could shed 30 pounds using his exercise machine, she'd match Kevin Harrington's deal and fund the other half of Jack's 180 k ask. Let me get this right. This guy has to lose 30 pounds. He's got to lose the Cactus Jack gut to get the 90 grand from Barbara. Sure enough, Jack did lose the weight, and infomercials for the body Jack were produced. Wow. Yeah! <laughs> Good job, Cactus. Now let's get down to business. However, it seems somewhere along the way, things fell apart. Corcoran has gone on record several times stating her deal with Cactus Jack as being one of her worst. Both their Facebook page and website are now defunct, and their product listings on Amazon are shown as currently unavailable. My dad influenced me with but one quote. He said, you can trade hours for dollars, or you can trade ideas for millions. Guess which one I chose. Number three, sweet balls. <laughs> That's right, sweet balls. As we've seen in this list, deals often fall through after the show airs when the investors learn of details not disclosed at pitch time. For sweet balls, it started falling apart immediately after their appearance on the show. Despite securing a deal with Mark Cuban and Barbara Corcoran, James McDonald and Cole Ager ended up in court over a dispute around ownership of the company. Wait, wait, right. wait. No, we didn't agree on 25%. Yes, we did. Yes, no, we, we did. didn't. I said wow. I think about it. Between restraining orders, fights over the use of company website domain names, and salary disputes, it's a business that has been plagued by drama. Details of how this affected the Sharks' investment are hard to find, but one can only assume this is a ball they'd rather not run with anymore. Who's hot? Who's hot? Who's hot? I think... Number two, Toy Guru. Rarely, Nikki, do I not ask for control, because I'm a control freak. Okay. But I trust you. You know what you're doing. You do. And I can help you immensely in the toy space. Immensely. 
Framed as the Netflix for toys, Toy Guru was a subscription-based business where customers could pay a monthly fee to receive a box full of toys every month. The great thing about my company is when their kids get bored with or outgrow those toys, they just throw them in the box, use the return label that we provided, send them back to us, and we send them their next box of toys. Both Mark and Kevin came in on the deal together with owner Nikki Pope. With powerhouses like these behind her, you'd think it would have been a recipe for success. I'm very excited. This is a great idea. Thank you so much. She appeared on several shows to promote the brand, which brought an influx of customers. However, the company was just two people, and Nikki was feeling the weight of responsibility as the subscriber base began to grow. After failing to meet demand, Toy Guru went bankrupt in April of 2012. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Breathometer To you, Charles. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes it ends badly, though. It was presented as a smartphone-compatible breathalyzer. Blowing into the device would yield a reading of one's blood alcohol level. In a rare showing of Unity, founder Charles Jim secured $1 million worth of funding from all five sharks. I've never thought about raising all the cash that we needed from the entire team of the sharks. I'm ecstatic right now. I have no words. I'm shocked. The product soared after the episode, but details emerged about its accuracy. An investigation determined the product often yielded a lower score than reality. This resulted in a settlement with the FTC that required the company to refund anyone who had purchased the product. The app and the product itself were also discontinued. Mark Cuban described the experience best in a Vanity Fair interview. Worst execution in Ever. the history of Shark Tank. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.